Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial, we're gonna talk about Paisley um, and some of the things that it kind of brings to mind and we're gonna do some kind of different crafts with it. Um, we're gonna be doing some sunflowers, I'm gonna show you some note cards, some little zip pouches, um, and we're gonna be using this awesome stencil from Maker Studio that's called Paisley. It's amazing, you guys. Uh, if you've been following DIY Dreaming for any amount of time, you know that I love these all over patterns. This one is amazing. So we're gonna be using that. We're also gonna be using this adorable one that says, you are my sunshine. We're gonna be using this little tin sign. Uh, it came from Walmart. I think it was around $6. We're gonna be using some of my favorite button magnets. We're gonna be using some cotton duck fabric. And oh my word, this is sounding complicated already, but I promise you it isn't. It's super fun. And if you decide to do something like this, I definitely wanna see pictures, okay? So let's hop right in. And let me ask you, what do you think about when you think about Paisley? Well, I looked on the internet this morning when I was not sleeping um, just to see a little bit of the history. And let me tell you a couple things. Okay, so when I think about Paisley, a lot of different things come to mind. First, it's that little droplet shape, like, um, like a curved tear, sort of like a large comma, or a swirly arabesque pattern. These are just my descriptions. It reminds me of some bell bottoms that my mother made for me in the 70s that were yellow with purple and pink and paisley on them. Um, so it's kind of a hippie chic type of a shape. It also kind of reminds me of a tadpole um, it's classic, yet it's bohemian. Um, and did you know that almost all bandanas have paisleys on them? I had not ever really paid attention to that until I was just looking for today. So the paisley is actually named after a town in Scotland. And what had happened was um, Britain was importing a ton of scarves of shawls made from really fine, what is, what is it called? Cashmere goat fur <laughs> um, that had this paisley design on them and they became a huge hit. So the people in um, this town in Scotland set out to make their own version of it and their town was named Paisley. So that's how it got its name. Um, and um, so it's, it's traditional, it's vintage, it's hippie chic 60s, it's um, funky. I mean, it's a lot of different things. And the funnest fact, excuse me, that I found was that um, it was really made popular in the 1960s by the Beatles. And did you know that John Lennon even had his Rolls Royce? painted in paisleys. So there you go. That's just a little bit of uh, fun details about paisleys. Okay, so let me tell you what I did here. First thing I did is I took some inexpensive paint. This is Waverly acrylic. The color is called plaster. It's a creamy color. And I painted the front of my little galvanized tin sign also from uh, Walmart. I just did two coats. It's messy. It doesn't matter. I could come back and scrape off some of the mess around the outside if I felt motivated. Okay, so that was the first thing I did. Then I set out to make some paisley sunflowers. Oh my gosh, because what do we have in this? We have some and thank you to my friend Diane. She said, you should do something with, because uh, I was talking to her about paisleys this morning. She said, why don't you do some flowers? I was like, ah, oh, yeah. She may have even said sunflowers, but as soon as I thought of that, I thought about this stencil that we're gonna use. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took this paisley stencil, 
which if you want a link to this, like I said at the start, this is a great all over pattern. Um, just say link paisley or something in the comments and I'll get you one when I'm all finished. Anyways, I took this and I took a piece of <gasps> cotton duck fabric in this creamy color, also from Walmart in the craft section. This came off of a bolt in our fabric department, but you can get this everywhere. Any place that sells fabric has canvas duck. You do want something that's, you know, got some oomph and stand up to it. And then I just took my stencil, I always label the back, took it off, laid it down on my piece of fabric. Okay, and I set out to make two different colors. So, we're using these um, gel art inks that come also from Maker Studio. This one is called Metallic Gold. There's a Metallic Copper. There's a Metallic Silver, and I used the Copper and the Silver on another project. Um, there's also this Brown, which let me see what it's called. These all have funny names. Well, I Swainy, S-W-A-N-E-E. -E. It's a Southern term. And um, this yellow, which is called Over Yonder. Okay, so we're gonna make the yellow first. Um, I wanted sunflower colors, but I didn't want it to be a buzzing, bright yellow. I wanted it to be kind of a, a mustardy almost color. So I'm just going to build my color right here and we're not going to do a whole entire thing of it but i'm going to just show you the basics so i started with some yellow and then i added a teeny tiny little dab of brown i'll put some right here we're, we'll come back to the brown and then i put some gold all right and then i just took my squeegee this is the maker studio squeegee and i just Started mixing the yellow and the gold up, grabbed a little bit of brown, pulled it in. And this is what you get. Doesn't look very appealing here on this paper plate, but it, it does in person. So I'm just gonna pick a spot. And I did half of this for the project in this gold. And then I did the other half in the brown. Well, no, a smaller piece in the brown color. Okay, I did not, did not get that spread out very good. But you'll see when I pull it up how it looks. Okay, now we're gonna make our brown. And the brown I just made with some brown and a little bit of gold. Same deal, just mixed it all up. Now, I don't know if you were aware that you can mix colors, but that's kind of fun to do. Oops, don't have any on my, to push this off the edge. Okay. So, you can use however much you need to cover the area that you want to cover. And um, so this is what it looked like, but what I did was like three quarters of it, the gold, so I'd have enough pieces, and then one quarter of it, the brown. And I'm gonna take this off to show you what it looks like. It's really pretty. So let me throw this in my little tub over here so it can be soaking until I can get into the kitchen to spray it clean. And here's what we have. Okay. So then, I'm gonna set this over here so I don't mess it up because I might wanna use those pieces. So then I um, made myself a pattern. Where are my patterns? Here they are using computer paper. We're not fancy here. We craft on paper plates. 
we um, we make patterns out of computer paper. And I just wanted to make this kind of stylized, funny sunflower. And then we'll put a round circle in the center of it and stuff it. And then this is a smaller one. And then I have an even smaller one over here. So to make these, just in case you're wondering, I don't have um, a document or anything that I could send you. I can measure it if that will be helpful. But this is just freehanded, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let me find my ruler though. Okay, so it's about nine and a half inches by eight. It's not even a circle. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It's this one. And then this one right here is about six and a half by seven. So I took a piece of paper and I folded it in fourths. And then I just cut. And here you go. Dun, 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 my fancy pattern. And same deal with this one. Exactly. Okay. Then I, when my fabric was dry, I pinned it on, okay, and I created two little sunflowers just by stuffing them. They're so cute. We're gonna do a smaller one in just a second. This was the first one. What do you guys think? You could put a little, um, it's got a lot of glue strings on it. You could do a bunch of leaves or you could even put a, a stem in here to have it stand up. But this is my little sunflower. Isn't it cute? Okay, and then this is the next size down and this one does have a leaf. Do you guys like this idea so far? It's gonna be super cute. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, and I have one that is not finished, that is much smaller, that honestly, I just did, I just cut it out free, free, free hand. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we need a front and a back. And my back is not, this must be a very dull pin. Uh, my back is not, oh yeah, that was super dull. Huh, how strange. Uh, the back is just plain cotton duck. Okay, and see, so this is the back and this is the front. And I did stuff a little bit under the center. The one we're going to be doing in just a second is too small for me to do that. But you can see how it has a little profile. And then I stuffed the whole rest of it. Okay, so let's cut this out and make this fun little flower, then we'll get a magnet going, and then we'll work on our sign. And before I go to do my sign, I wanna remember, cause I know, I'm afraid I'm gonna forget, to show you some of the other things that I made this morning using my Paisley stencil. And also I wanna show you some other really different um, all over pattern kind of things that are also from Maker Studio that you might want to look at. The reason why I love an all over pattern stencil so much is because you can use it for absolutely anything. Um, so they're super versatile. It, and you, whatever you make can be changed in color, can be for a particular season, um, a particular purpose. Uh, like I made some real pretty note cards in two different styles that I'll show you. And then I made two little zip pouches in two different styles that I'll show you that too. So all over patterns, I think are one of the uh, best investments in your crafting supplies. And like I said just a few minutes ago, if you want a link to any of these, just let me know. And when I'm all done, I will post some pictures in uh, the comments. Not pictures, I'll put some links, sorry. Woo. Okay, so here's our front and here's our back. 
you can't even stop crafting everything I've crafted. You're so far behind. Okay, well, hey, listen, Deborah, you don't have to make everything I make. I just want to give you ideas, lots of them, and have you be able to, you know, use them here and there for your <laughs> projects. But I do hear from people sometimes that say, girl, I can't keep up with you. And I'm like, you really don't need to. So don't feel like you have to. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue this little round piece. Somewhere towards the center. And then we will start gluing this puppy together. I love stuffing things. If you're new to my page, tell me. The Paisley stencil came from Maker Studio and I'm gonna get you a link um, so that you can look through my website. Um, I make, just to be um, transparent, I make a small commission off of the sales that go into that company through my website and that's how I pay for all this kind of good stuff that we craft with every day, so. I would love it if you would use my link. So just give me a few minutes and I'll get you a good one. Okay, I don't wanna forget and close this all the way around. And I have been known to do that before. So let me just pay attention for a moment. We're just going to use some, sorry about that, we're going to use some polyfill, uh, I'll show you what it looks like, also from Walmart, just your basic five, six dollar thing, and I am guessing that I won't be able to get too much in there, so we'll just take a little handful. going to put some of this in it. On the bigger ones, I tried to push it out in the little points of the sunflower, but this one really is too small, I think, to be able to do that. Oh gosh, it did not take very much at all. Okay, so we'll clean some of this up. When we're done, we're going to close it. Push all that in long enough to glue this closed. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a magnet on the back. These are magnetic buttons. You can get them at every craft store. They come in different sizes. They're awesome to work with. They're not great for uh, little ones or pets to eat. So just be cautious and don't leave them, you know, on a low table where a little one could say, oh, this looks like a piece of candy. I wanna eat it. Um, just testing my magnet out to see which side is stronger, okay. So on this one, I'm just gonna try with one magnet. On this one, I have two, and it has a leaf, okay? And then on this one, I'm not planning to put it on this sign because it's really too big, but it is pretty darn cute, don't you think? It would be cute in a, as a bowl filler, and I would probably make these a little bit smaller. But, um, okay, so let me think. Next thing we want to do, is we want to stencil our little tin sign. And like I said before, I put two messy coats, and when I say messy, it really they really are messy, on this little tin placard from Walmart in the craft supply section. I wanted you to be able to see what I was putting on here, and I felt like if, um, if I just left it on the tin, that you might not be able to see it very well. Hey, and I forgot to say, 
if these comments right here are bothering you, you should be able to swipe them either with your finger, a mouse, a cursor, depending on what you're watching on, uh, if you're on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, it should not be a problem at all. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my stencil. I'll just use these scissors. Um, because I wanna do part of this at the bottom and part of this at the top. Okay, I'm gonna put this at the bottom and I'm gonna put this part up at the top. And let's just look to see what we think we're gonna do. I might not even use the You Are My Sunshine. I don't know, we'll see. So we're gonna be using all these same colors of um, brown and yellow and gold. And I'm looking for some small cut apart squeegees because I feel like this other one is gonna maybe be kind of big for the project. Okay, so these gray stencils do not get fuzzed, in case you're wondering. And I'm gonna do this so that these go clear down to the You want them to be standing up straight. Okay, we need to mix up some more good stuff over here. And I'm gonna just do some yellow and gold. I do want it to sort of match the little flower pieces that I have at the top. I'm getting down to my last drips of yellow, so we'll see, hopefully I can make it work. So this is gold, this is the yellow and the gold, and I'm gonna do a little teeny touch of the brown, just a teeny one. Okay. And we're gonna do the sunflowers, this color. We might do the bead, just the bright yellow. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just mixing it up. And let's just whip these puppies out. We may come back and go over the center of these sunflowers with the brown. And I'm gonna do the stems and the leaves all brown, just to carry our color theme all the way through. out of the way so you guys can maybe see I think I'll do my bees just in this exact same color be easier okay and we're gonna come back with the brown now make some brown. The brown is just going to be brown plus a little bit of gold. I don't know how much I'm going to need. We'll try that. Right, let me wipe this off. Okay, so let's mix up our brown. Okay, and what I'm using right now is one of those cut apart squeegees that Maker Studio has. They also have the big one, this thing now. And they have um, a couple other tools that you might wanna look at if you're in need of some craft tools. You know, it's so, oops, it's so interesting that sunflowers 
are considered a fall flower because where I live, I live in the south, in Georgia actually, um, where I live, some flowers bloom like in uh, June. <laughs> so they're definitely a summer or, or uh, maybe, maybe July sometimes if there's a ton of rain, but they're not a fall flower here. I do understand that in other parts of the country they are, and the colors are perfect for fall. But I hope this turns out good. I'm thrilled with the little sunflower, stuffed sunflowers, but I hope this part's good too. Okay, and then they have this tool that looks like this like a stylus sort of and I'm just going to grab a little bit of gold or of the brown sorry and I'm going to try to sort of push it in I don't know if that's going to work to some of the centers of my sunflowers you know what let's try it just like this it's not looking like it wants to We'll see how that looks. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Okay, so this is what it looks like a big mess. Please, please work. Oh, it's pretty. Oh my goodness. It is so pretty, you guys. Oh my goodness. Throwing my stencil in this little bath over here. And I'll hold this up to show you. Isn't that cute? So I was going to do this thing on here, the other part of the stencil that says you are my sunshine. But I think I'd rather just do these flowers. So let's try that out and see how that looks. This guy right here might need another magnet. Susie, she says, oh, wow, it's gorgeous. Well, you know, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get until you get it. But um, anyways, so I love how this turned out. I hope that you do too. It's a great fall themed yellowy, goldy sunflower and brown project. And I think the leaves and the stems look just fine. In brown tell me what you think obviously you could do this stencil the whole thing if you like you could just do do parts of it you could do it it would be cute on a t-shirt super cute on a t-shirt and um, you could do whatever colors you want so let me tell you about these gel inks real quick and then I want to show you the other things that I made before I came live while I was playing with my paisley stencil Oh my bird, got a big mess here. Okay. Alright, so the brown is called Well I Swainy. S-W-A-N-E. It's gel art ink. The gold is metallic gold. 
And then the yellow that we used on this is called Over Yonder. Now on the other projects I'm about to show you, I also used this metallic copper and this metallic silver. And what I wanna tell you about these guys, all of these, is um, that these are for fabric, typically. And you can heat set them so you can make a t-shirt, a tea towel, a tote, a pillow, a zip pouch, and heat set it with your hot iron, or if you have a heat press, you can use that. But these also work great on porous surfaces, and they worked just fine on this paint, and they work great on paper. So if you've never played with any of these, um, just let me know and I'll get you a link. They have a whole bunch of different colors. These are just the ones that I pulled out for today. Okay, let me show you what else I made um, before I came live. All right, I started by making some of these little note cards. Look how gorgeous that is. This one is a mix of all three of the metallic colors, and I did the front and the back flap. And then you would just write your note in here. So that's one, and this is the other one that I did with all three colors. It's hard to see a little bit. Pretty, huh? It takes like no time at all. In fact, I did all four note cards at the same time. I just laid them all out and put the stencil on the top, flipped it over, boom, 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 and boom, I was done. So there's these two. And um, these came from a package of envelopes and note cards that I believe I got at either Joann's or Hobby Lobby um, on sale. These are four inches by five and a half inches, and it came with the envelopes and the cards that you fold in half. Okay, so that was that. And then here are the white ones, which turned out so pretty, oh my goodness. Okay, so this one right here, and this, I don't know why I got this set. I didn't mean to, honestly, to be truthful with you. I always like the kind that fold, but this is one of those ones that's just a single card. Um, you know, it doesn't fold. Anyways, I did this. I'm trying to get it so it's not, the glare's not so bad, in just the gold, the metallic gold. Isn't that pretty? And then I did this one with the combination of all three colors. And so you just flip it over and write your note, whichever way you want. Um, you can get these white note cards with envelopes everywhere also. Just be on the lookout and when they're on sale, buy them, get some. Um, like I said, these were Paper Studio and they were $12.99. And um, I feel like I got those for 40 or 50% off. I think, I can't remember. I have so many craft supplies, but I think those came from Hobby Lobby. Pretty, huh? And I, again, this all over pattern. I love this idea because it's not tied to any particular season or occasion. So you could use it for everything. All right, and then I made this little zip pouch on a little black zippered pouch that I had, don't know where it came from, can't remember, had it for a long time. Just using the gold ink and gel art ink, and then I made this one on a little black and white zippered pouch. This might have come from Hobby Lobby, I can't remember. Um, just using the black gel art ink, and I heat set both of these with an iron just for three or four minutes, just going back and forth over and over on about just a little bit below cotton. And um, so these could actually even be washed in the washing machine if I wanted to. So, okay, so let me show you last but not least some other cool and different 
uh, all of her pattern stencils that Maker Studio has. Look at this one. Okay, ignore my spot where I got a whole bunch of ink on the, I was using a black ink right here and it stained that part of my stencil, but look how beautiful. It still works absolutely fine. This is a gorgeous stencil with the all over pattern. And then this one right here is pretty new to me. It's called Ferns. It's a great stencil. This one is called Chagrin. Chagrin? Chagrin. And it's like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like an oil oil spill or soap bud bubbles or something. Very interesting. They also have one that I don't have yet that's a crocodile print that kind of looks like this. And then let me see, I have some more in my drawer. Let's see. Ooh, this is a pretty all over print. That is bees. The one uh, that people were absolutely dying over. Um, couldn't They couldn't keep it in stock. Where is it? Was the um, dragonfly. Here it is. And I actually cut mine into two pieces. So it's, it's big also. This is a great stencil too. So I just wanted to show you all of these ideas. Um, and just talk a little bit about Paisley. Uh, I think it's just some of the information is really cool. I had no idea that it was named after a town in Scotland. Um, and that it had, you know, it, it was brought over from India to Britain in the 1800s. And then it just became so popular. These scar these big um, shawls that that is when this little town started producing tons of this kind of thing and they named this fun little shape paisley after that town i didn't know that either and i don't remember that um one of the beatles uh painted his rolls royce in a paisley uh pattern but anyways I hope that you liked these projects. I'm pretty tickled with how this one turned out, especially. I love to do stuff, flowers. Um, how do you clean your stencils? Okay, this is a great topic, Deborah. Thank you for asking that question. Let me just tell you real quick and then I'll hop off. All right, so what I do, should I bring over my tub? It's looking pretty pitiful, but I'll bring it over and show you. This is just how I do it. I don't know what other crafters do, but this is a $1 tub from Dollar Tree. It's filled with cool water, and I just lay my stencils in it after I've used them face down. Then, when I'm all finished here, I'll go out to the kitchen sink, and I'll lay them with the face up, the side that would have all the stuff on it, in my sink, and I'll use my sprayer and just spray it off. If it's really, um, really stained or, or kind of dried on the front a little bit, you do want to get it in water ASAP, but you can use a kitchen sponge and a little bit of dish soap on the front, okay? And then I just flip it over and lay it out on my counter to dry. Uh, sticky side up. One time, um, I think it was two Easter's ago, I laid a stencil out with the sticky side down and then I forgot to do anything with it till the next morning. And it was completely ruined because it was stuck onto the kitchen counter and there was absolutely no way it was coming off. So always lay them sticky side up uh, so that they don't get glued to your counter. And that's pretty much it. Now when they start to get not super sticky, like, let me find one that's not super, super sticky. Hmm. Oh, this is a perfect example. Let me move my little tub. Okay, when they start to get a little bit not sticky, which is just something that happens, it's a sign that you love that stencil. Um, like this one. It's not super sticky. It's still, they're still going to have some tack. 
And when you lay it down on your project and just push it down firm, you'll find that it will attach. Now some crafters use some sort of a spray that is a adhesive spray on the back of their stencils. I have never done that. I have some stencils that I've used many, many, many times and they virtually have no stick left to them, but I still haven't used that adhesive spray because once you press them down, um, they stay solid enough. If, if necessary, you can hold them down with one hand and you know apply your medium with the other. Um, but you can try it if you want. I don't know how that's gonna work if you if you wanna try an adhesive spray. I don't think it's necessary. And also, I don't think it's worth wrecking your stencil, so. Yeah, Melody says, um, I would think that that would clog the screen area. Me too, but, uh, yeah. So I really don't even recommend that. I'm just telling you that some people do that. I personally don't, I never have. Um, so that's how you clean them. And then I will put them back. Uh, ooh, I didn't label this one, uh-oh, naughty me. Um, I'll put them back on the little carrier sheet and I almost always, I didn't in that instance, label what it is so I know which side to put it on. And I just have a little cabinet over here, you can kind of see it, where I just lay my stencils until I need them again. Some of them, I'll put them back in the plastic sleeves. I don't do that with all of them, but you can if you want. And um, so they're just laying in my little cabinet, flat, and they're good to go. All right, well, if you guys have questions, please let me know. If you liked this project, I think it turned out adorable, feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. If you want links for this Paisley stuff or any of the other stencils or gel links or the squeegee or anything else, let me know that in the comments. If you wanna know where I got this little tin, the magnets and the canvas deck fabric, it was all from Walmart. The polyfill was even from Walmart, so. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I will get pictures. I'll put those here in the comments, and I'll also just share them in a separate post here at DIY Dreaming. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what we'll be doing tomorrow, but we'll be doing something fun, something that'll be quick and easy, maybe a little different, like, I don't know, Paisley? magnetized stuffed flowers are kind of different. So we'll probably be doing something kind of different, um, something quick and easy that you don't have to be an artist or a professional crafter to do. And it'll probably involve one of my three favorite things, either faith, family, or flowers. All right, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys later. know that I can make something pretty over here for you guys to screenshot because <laughs> my table's such a mess but uh, this might just be enough to jog your memory if you're trying to remember what did we do here let's see everywhere else. Okay, see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your day.